Stay connected to your community and save. Just 99 cents a month gets you three months of unlimited access to inform.com. Visit inform.com slash subscribe and get your first three months of news for only 99 cents a month. Tom Netherton starred in The Lawrence Welk Show in the 70s, became a popular Christian performer in the 80s, and declined to comment about something Kathy Lee Gifford said in the 90s. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to Back Then. A couple of weeks ago, I wrote a story on the passing of David Soul, the actor best known for his role as Ken Hutch Hutchinson on Starsky and Hutch. The focus of the story was his connections to the Dakotas and Minnesota, most notably how his career exploded right after he was cast in the first ever Medora musical in 1965. That got me to thinking about other notable Medora singers, now called the Burning Hill Singers, who've hit it big over the years. One of them was Tom Netherton, a cast member from 1972, who went on to star on The Lawrence Welk Show from 1973 to 1982. Now, while I wasn't a fan of the show back in those days, like many kids in the 70s, I just kind of couldn't escape it. It just seemed like it was always on. Like Hee Haw, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, The Wonderful World of Disney, and of course, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. Remember all of those? You see, we didn't have a lot of choices back in those days. We kids would bide our time with those shows until The Partridge Family, The Brady Bunch, or Emergency came on. Anyway, I digress. I do remember seeing Netherton sing his old timey ballads on the Welk Show. He was tall, six foot five, blonde and handsome, in a white bread polyester shirt gold chain kind of way. He even looked a little bit like David Soul, that guy I'd watch on Starsky and Hutch every week. And like Soul, I thought I had heard that he was from our neck of the woods, but that's about all I knew. But Like I said, a couple of weeks ago, while researching a story on Soul's death, I found some previous stories written by my colleague, Kurt Erickson, about how Soul and Netherton both rose to fame after their time in western North Dakota. I figured I could expand a bit on Kurt's work. And if you were interested in Soul's story, perhaps you'd be interested in that other blonde, blue-eyed singing cowboy, Tom Netherton. As I did with Soul from his Washington High yearbook in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I was able to pick through Netherton's Bloomington High School yearbooks from 1964 and 65 to learn a little bit more about the young man behind the star. Okay, so let's get started. According to Eric's Moan, Thomas Harold Netherton Jr. was born January 11, 1947 in Munich, Germany to Thomas and Lillian Christensen Netherton. At the time of his son's birth, Thomas Sr. was a career military officer stationed in Germany. He was a member of the 82nd Airborne Division and, during World War II, was awarded three bronze stars for valor. After 20 years in the U.S. Army, Thomas Sr. received his discharge and moved his family to Bloomington, near Minneapolis. Eric Smone called Tom Jr. shy, but in looking through his yearbooks, It's easy to see he wasn't sitting home alone in his room reading books. He was busy. Among other things, he was senior class president, a homecoming ambassador, a service club member, a Spanish club member, and a track and field athlete. But two of his pursuits seemed to stand out. Not surprisingly, he was a theater guy. Eric Smone tells a story of his unlikely start on stage. He said, While in junior high, Tom and his buddies dared one another to audition for the school musical production. He climbed up on stage, sang almost like being in love, jumped off the stage, and ran for home. The next morning, he was shocked to see his name posted on the bulletin board as the main lead. His leading man days continued. He starred in Brigadoon at Bloomington High. One kind of cute photo I found from his yearbook shows girls surrounding him asking for his autographs. But Netherton also had his sights set far beyond the stage. He was active in the American Field Service, or AFS Club, which encouraged student exchanges with other countries. 
According to Eric Smone, in the summer between his junior and senior years, he took part in the AFC program and lived in a small town in Peru, high in the Andes Mountains. A write-up in his yearbook joked about his wardrobe of ponchos and cutoffs during a chilly fall picnic when he came back home to Minnesota. Following graduation from high school and a brief stint at the University of Minnesota, Netherton followed in his father's footsteps and joined the Army. He excelled during basic training, earning the title of Outstanding Trainee of the Cycle. Officer Candidate School followed, along with promotions to second and first lieutenant. While serving as commander of the 1542 Infantry Unit in Panama, he frequently sang for the troops just for fun. He was good enough to be broadcast over the Army's non-military radio network, Voice of America. He also became increasingly interested in church while in Panama and declared himself a born-again Christian. His life seemed to be leading in two new directions, music and evangelism. When he was discharged from the Army, Netherton trained to be a missionary, but his love of music was still there. He thought, could he sing and spread the gospel? The answer seemed to be yes. According to Eric Smone, by examining Pat Boone's career, he decided he could do both by becoming a Christian singer. He started performing in gospel tours outside Bloomington. Money was a bit tight, so he reached out for help to Fred Smith, a producer who had once booked him for floor show work at a Bloomington restaurant. Smith was now the associate producer for Al Sheehan Productions and as co-creator with Harold Schaefer of the Medora musical, told Netherton he thought he'd be a great addition to the 1972 cast. Netherton didn't like being so far from Minneapolis, but he took the job anyway to help pay off his debts. Among his biggest fans were Harold Schaefer, who again was one of the co-founders of the Medora musical, and his wife Sheila. They were impressed by his singing and stage presence, so much so that they wanted to introduce him to one of North Dakota's most famous celebrities who happened to be in his home state for a family reunion. Eric Smone wrote, Harold and Sheila Schaefer introduced Netherton to Lawrence Welk at a Bismarck golf course. And a few nights later, Welk had the young man auditioning to become a regular on his popular TV program in front of an audience of 19,000 people at a show in St. Paul. Netherton was a hit, and he made his television debut on the Lawrence Welk Christmas special in 1973. Welk seemed to appreciate Netherton's wholesome image and gave him a platform to sing religious hymns and pop standards. In an era when other male singers his age, he was 26, were growing their hair and dropping acid, Netherton was definitely square. But it seemed to work. He was one of Welk's most popular entertainers, singing on the show from 73 to Welk's retirement in 82. When asked about Netherton, Welk said, Tom's got a good noodle, and he's a showman. If he continues to work, I think he'll make it. In fact, I'll bet Tom could run for president. Well, he didn't run for president, but when he wasn't filming the Welk show, he traveled the nation like he was campaigning for it, performing in venues across the country. According to the Forum Archives, Netherton came to Moorhead in 1975 to sing at a Concordia College C-400 fundraiser and was back in the area in 1979 to appear at an evangelism rally at the Fargo Civic Center. He also became a spokesperson for Nabisco's Triscuits and Rose Milk Skin Care Lotion. When the Lawrence Welk Show went off the air in 1982, he faded a bit from the national spotlight, except for reruns of the show on PBS stations. However, by 1993, he was back in the limelight for another reason, and it involved talk show host Kathy Lee Gifford. Netherton first met Kathy Lee Gifford when she was married to music producer Paul Johnson, who produced some of Netherton's Christian albums in the 70s. They were all friends. Gifford even tried to set up Netherton with some of her single friends. And she wasn't the only one. Netherton also appeared on The Dating Game, but he never married. In 1993, Gifford, now divorced from Johnson, wrote about her troubled first marriage to Johnson in her book, I Can't Believe I Said That. In it, she said Johnson, quote, had lived with a gay performer on The Lawrence Welk Show, end quote. Tongues wagged, and as Eric Smone said, Kathy Lee never gave the name of the performer, but since Johnson and Netherton had been good friends, some insisted that she was referring to Netherton. 
Both Netherton and Gifford refused to comment on it, and eventually the rumor faded away. Thirty-two years after he first set foot on the Medora stage, Netherton returned for 2005's 40th anniversary show. He was later honored in the Scandinavian American Hall of Fame in Minot, North Dakota. Sadly, early in 2018, Netherton got the flu and developed pneumonia. He died on January 7th at the age of 70. After writing about Netherton and Soul, who both reached fame after leaving North Dakota, it makes me wonder if they ever crossed paths and maybe even chatted about their shared bond of performing as singing cowboys on the Medora stage. Probably not, but it's interesting to imagine what their conversation would have been like. So rest in peace, gentlemen, and thanks for the music and the memories. And thank you for tuning into Back Then. I hope you join me again next time. Get reliable and accurate local news with Inform.com. Inform.com is your trusted local news source with journalists dedicated to keeping you informed about what's happening in your community. Visit Inform.com now.